Everton Football Club have just been handed a 10-point deduction. Why? Let's get into it. This, like anything legally, has been going on behind the scenes for the last couple of years and has always been a possibility and, as of right now, could be something more. Large emphasis on the could because I don't know. An article earlier today put out by The Mirror said that Everton face further nine-point deduction and relegation as three clubs plan legal action. Those three clubs is Burnley, High, Leeds United and Leicester City that's planned to make an appeal that could be up to £300 million that could plunge Everton into administration if they are successful. The question is this, why are Burnley, Leeds and Leicester so butthurt about Everton? If you're not a avid Premier League watcher or really you just support the top six clubs and don't care about anyone else, let me set the scene here. Back in early 2022, there was an alleged breach brought by a complaint by Leeds United and Burnley Football Club. What was this breach? Well, a breach of financial fair play rules. Oh, those guys again. Any breach of these regulations, also known as profitability and sustainability rules, is punishable by a fine or possibility of deducted points. And I know what you're thinking. But Liam, Liam, haven't like Manchester City got like 115 charges on things along the lines of financial fair play? Yes, yes they do. That's going to be a really fun day when you finally get to the bottom of that one. But before we do continue, if you can help me out, smash the like button and also subscribe if you're new. We are so close to 400,000 subscribers. If we do hit that before the end of the year, then that means that we've gained 100,000 new subscribers in the last year, which is incredible. So thank you for that. And for the best gift ideas for Christmas, for yourself, your friends, or your family, top link of the description, Mozilla Designs to Cut UK, the best football print company in the world. That is because... It's my stuff. So, yeah. Code Etsmus for 15% off all items, including mini Everton stuff as well. So, let's get into it. Now, of course, I can go into detail about the exact amounts of money, but you probably don't know or care. But I'll try and make it simple and kind of fun. Under the league's financial fair play regime, clubs are only allowed to lose a maximum of £105 million over a rolling three-year period. This is a problem for Everton because during 2018-19 to 2020-21, they spent £372 million, which is, you know quite a large amount above that. Now I know what you're saying, wait, but that also involves 2020, which means COVID, right? So they can get around it. And yes, there was a pandemic and pretty much every single football club on the planet also lost money as a result, but Everton's losses were £150 million worse than the Premier League's next biggest loss maker in the same period, which, have a guess who it was, you may be surprised, it's Chelsea. Now, the Premier League did count COVID in mind and counted two of the seasons as one big season to make it a bit more easier for them. And alongside COVID, there's also one big problem in a big thing called a stadium called the Bramley Moor Dock, which is, of course, is still ongoing and still being constructed. Almost done now, mind you. Spending a lot of money on that. And Everton, of course, are using the stadium for good reason, to also showcase the losses have not gone purely on transfers. So long story short, all these deductions means that they have much more of a chance of being inside that £105 million limit. However, clearly it's still not enough. Everton, of course, have come out saying that they are disappointed by the Premier League's decision and are entirely confident that they haven't broken or breached any of the rules. Covid is a big part of this and is a big part of the reason why Everton are trying to get out of this in the best way they can. Everton did claim that they had the worst case of Covid-19 than any other club in the country. They claim that they made losses of £170 million, which sounds like a lot of money, especially considering that by the books, Match day revenue for Everton the previous year in 1819 was only £14.2 million. So there's quite a big gap there. Of course, keep in mind reduction in commercial income and um, broadcasting dumbed down a bit as well. Everton obviously are not the only club to make these points. Arsenal and Manchester United have also put into their notes of how much they lost due to the pandemic. However, Everton are claiming that they lost much more in contrast to 
Man United, for example, which for me is still a bit odd. All of this is the reason why Leeds United and Burnley put a complaint to the Premier League in the first place, stating that they believe that Everton broke the rules and spent more money than what they really should have, and due to Everton spending more money than they should have, and therefore you would think would benefit from that, by the idea of gaining an unfair competitive advantage, Burnley and Leeds United would be relegated due to this unfair competitive competitive advantage and therefore losing hundreds of millions of pounds from Premier League revenue. So this has been ongoing ever since then. The only confusing thing is, is that according to the independent commission, they stated that they did not gain a sporting advantage, which leads to more confusion in terms of why were they docked points for something that was deemed not impacting the football pitch that's the confusing part and it makes you think about how successful could these appeals be or lawsuits be by Leeds or Leicester and Burnley if the commission states that they did not gain a advantage in any way or sporting advantage that is and of course this has been ongoing ever since then and of course Leeds did you know kind of calm down on their protest on it uh, because they stayed up and Burnley went down however Leeds went down a year afterwards and they still maintained with it and hey look it's Leicester City who also joined the party and also Southampton have also claimed to as well be putting in a lawsuit so we are now back to where we are now Everton now have got 10 points deducted and still ahead of Burnley, which is, I mean, even as a Burnley fan, that is just incredibly ironic. Especially when you consider that the manager is, of course, you know, Sean Dyche. And the captain is James Tarkovsky. I hate life. So how about today, on the 18th of November, what is the plan of action? Well, it's not over, sadly. All three teams, Burnley, Leeds and Leicester, have affirmed plans to escalate the situation. And by filing a lawsuit to Everton, claiming damages and loss of earnings, if this is proved successful, this could potentially bring administration and a automatic nine points penalty. And this has happened before. During the 0910 season, Portsmouth were docked nine points for entering administration and the punishment came in immediate effect. This is only the third time in history that a Premier League club has been docked points. Of course, Portsmouth were in 0910 and Middlesbrough was back in 96-97 for failing to fulfill a fixture. So that's the kind of boring legal stuff done. Now let's talk about the actual club itself. Sean Dyche is a man that never has it easy I, I would say. Despite my obvious connections with Sean Dyche, I do wish him the best and I, I just wish that it's not at a club that could maybe send down Burnley as well. I love the man, I love everything about him and for some reason I feel like this will make him better <laughs> annoyingly enough. Sean Dyche's main trait is character, is camaraderie, is a team spirit, an ethos, a togetherness within the club and something like this happening can bring out that surge mentality that can really bring the team together, us against the world, that kind of thing. And Everton are doing a lot better, much better than what people would have thought considering it was not that long ago that people thought that they were going to be in the mud. Don't forget they lost to Luton Town 1-0 at home and look back on any Everton fans videos, um, Toffee TV, all them lot they are all convinced they're going down if you were someone that wasn't keeping too up to date with the table you may have been quite surprised to see Everton in 14th and way away from the relegation drop zone maybe also surprised to see that they are one of the most informed teams in the country getting some big wins in the last couple of weeks beating Palace away West Ham away Villa away in the cup, beating Bournemouth at home, Burnley and also getting a draw against Brighton and also win away at Brentford too and these are in the last, you know, 7-8 games. It's Sean Dyche football, it's effective football, being solid at the back, having a strong core, a two banks of four pretty much, a 4-4-1-1 he plays with a number nine who is big, like a hold at the ball in the likes of Dominic Cavalloon or the likes of um, Beto, a very physical midfield engine in Onana, Docore, James Garner and wide players that works hard, tracks back and can put in a decent delivery in the box with big centre halves that keeps it simple and can win a header. Throw in a goalkeeper that is a complete mentalist and you've got a Sean Dyche team. Ever since Dominic Cavallone has come back from his injury, they've been a completely different team. And even though he's not scored too many goals, he's scored four, he's been involved in absolutely everything good with Everton Football Club. And, and it does really show how important a good really good number nine is in the Premier League. It really does show. If you ask 
any Evertonian, what do you want the most? And they would say, I want a cup run because they know they're not going to win a league like most people. So a cup run is probably the best chance they'll get. And that is a possibility. They're in the quarters of the League Cup and they've got Fulham at home before the semis. And that is definitely winnable. Adding the fact that there's not too many great teams left in the League Cup, they've got a good chance. So this 10 point deduction, even as a Burnley fan, you would think, oh, I'm happy, right? Because it helps us out. I don't think it matters. Even with minus 10 points, they still are level with us, actually above us, which is embarrassing. And I don't think that it will play much of a factor, mainly because they need to win one more game and they are above everyone again. The bottom three are not the greatest. I think we already know that, but I don't really think this will throw their season off course. If anything, I think it will make Everton much more together. And I think that's what Sean Dyche actually would like more than anything else. And I think he thrives off that. He thrives off adversity. So, if you're an Evertonian, you'll probably be fine. This may sound really like damning, but I just I just love Sean Dyche. And what about the Evertonians? Because there's an entire fan base here that has to respond back to this as well. And what do they think? And I went to the good lads at EFC Daily, and I went to them saying, yo, what's the Everton fan perspective on all of this? And they said the following. Most Evertonians think that they are guilty. Of course, the club is rotten from top to bottom. The ownership is a complete mess. And that they do deserve some sort of punishment as they did technically break the rules. However, the issue is, is the consistency of what those punishments will be. The issue that they find is that by the independent commission stated in their report that they did not gain a sporting advantage. So taking 10 points off the table for what they state is not a sporting advantage is quite confusing to them, especially considering that the 10 points is just kind of plucked out of thin air with kind of no basis for it. However, when you compare it to nine points for being in administration, if you compare nine points for administration, but 10 points for breaking FFP by a small amount in football money, that is, then they don't really know how to really justify it. One example they use is the top six when they try to break away to the European Super League. And what did they get for trying to break away from the league? A 2.5 million pound fine. And they would see that as a much more serious case than breaking FFP. From what I gather from Evertonians, they believe that they are being made an example of, as this is something that doesn't typically happen in the Premier League. And they are making an example to Everton to kind of deter any other team from trying to break the rules which is something funny, and this is an important thing to talk about, is, you know, Manchester City does exist. Do not forget, over 100 FFP charges, 100 separate financial fair play breaches during 2009-10, to 2017-18. Fo this followed after a four-year investigation into the club. Everton have been hit 10 points for allegedly breaching the profit and sustainability rules in the 21-22 campaign. So where does this plant Man City? I mean, if this is for, you know, a breach, what happens with City? Is this going to be, I mean, realistically, if you're going to really try and be consistent, one breach by Everton means 10 points, then City is I mean, that has to be expulsion, right? That has to be a thousand points. Like how many points are we talking here? The precedent has now been set by the Premier League. 10 point deduction for Everton. So what must happen to Man City? I mean, you give me your thoughts down below. What can it be? I mean, relegation to the championship or even further, how many fines would it be? Are they gonna be having trophies took away from them i mean what's the possibilities here it's not one charge or five charges or 10 charges it's over 100 charges so i mean what what is gonna happen according to the premier league man city allegedly broke the rules over nine seasons they allegedly didn't provide accurate financial information they tried to, they tried to hide information however due to how complex this is we may not hear anything about this for potentially another year or two. I mean, this is a big, serious investigation and it would take a long time to go through all of these charges. Hence why it took four years to investigate it in the first place. And one fan base that'd be very interested to see what may happen to City is most definitely going to be Evertonians. So we look forward to that. Tell me your thoughts down below. I hope you do enjoy. Of course, Everton fans will be protesting this. Of course, they will be raising money to provide banners. Everton fans, of course, believe that the Premier League is corrupt in this, in terms of how they punish them. Many would have thought that a fine would have been more than fair or a minimal points deduction, but 10 points they believe is excessive. Tell me if you think Everton fans are in the right or in the wrong. And I can't lie, it's almost so ironic that 
the one time that it feels like Everton are going in the right direction, they've won a couple of games on a the bounce, they've got a, a decent, you know, like, good feel to the club again, and then this happens. Like, Everton just cannot stop having some madness happen. I mean, this has always been behind the scenes, but they've had a decent run it felt like maybe they can go in the right direction i don't know why but i, I kind of think that they they enjoy it in a way i think they enjoy the adversity at times i think that's what makes everton everton so yeah we're gonna see what happens over there see you guys later on and enjoy your day see ya